Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my channel. Uh, I somehow got caught off guard when I started that video, which is preposterous because I'm the one that hit the button. But anyway, I am excited because today I want to talk to you about my top 10 designer fragrances. And I want to thank one of my subscribers for asking me the question, what's your top 10? Uh, and I wouldn't say this is what I would consider my top 10 for life. Maybe they are, uh, but they're 10 fragrances that I think are really solid that everybody needs to know about. I've talked about all of these a lot, so maybe you're sick of hearing about them, but I'm going to talk about them again and I hope you enjoy. And if you are new and haven't hit that subscribe button, just go ahead and hit it. I would love for you to be part of the Weird and Wonderful family. And for those of you that are already part of the community, I just want to say, like, seriously, over the past little while, your guys' engagement, you guys are starting to engage with one another. And if I don't answer a question right away, someone else will answer it. And I just want to say thank you so much uh, for kind of like reading through the comments and like engaging in the community. I just really appreciate you. And I also just want to say, uh, like I'm really appreciating just the positivity and and that's the thing well first of all thank you guys for all of your encouragement because you're very positive towards me uh, I'm sure that there's some people that are, are you know eventually there's always going to be someone that's negative but overall you're a really positive light-hearted group and I just love you so thank you so much and without further ado let's get into this so Okay, I'm going to start with the one that I, like, when I look at this, you know, the 10 here, it's the one that my eye naturally gravitates towards for whatever reason, and that is Olympia Aqua by Paco Rabanne. Now, most people would go with Olympia, and this is definitely not a fragrance for everybody. Uh, I think that there's something for everybody in this list, uh, but this one has salt in it. So this one has jasmine. Uh, it's got salt, aquatic notes. The reason I actually prefer the Aqua over the original because I like that little bit of that hit of orange or citrus. It just adds a bit of juiciness and makes this one a little bit less potentially cloying. So I really love this. It's juicy. It smells warm and sunny. And I always think of a woman that's been laying on the beach and you know uh, when they're just really bronze and glowing uh, from the the sun and from the heat uh, and they've been in the ocean and there's salt on their skin to me this just smells like delicious warm sunshiny salty delicious skin may <laughs> does it taste like that or smell like that um, I don't know but I just think it smells amazing so I always think of like a a bronze goddess, uh, you know, that's just, uh, you know, just soaking in the rays. That definitely wouldn't be me because I'm the crazy that's got like <laughs> a huge hat on sitting in the shade and not lying down. I don't like laying in the sa s sand. I've never liked laying on a beach. I want a chair and I want it underneath the coconut tree. <laughs> I'd be the one underneath the coconut tree with big huge sunglasses on and a crazy hat. That would be me. <laughs> when I put this one on, I feel like a bronze goddess. Uh, yeah, I just love this one and I love the salt component. There's a vanilla in it, amber, so I just think this one's beautiful. The, uh, the original Olympia is also beautiful and I have the Olympia Intense and that's gorgeous as well. But if you like a salt fragrance or want to try it in your perfume, definitely this is one of my top 10 designers for sure. Next one I want to share with you is Mon Guerlain by Guerlain. Now this one, I'm not going to go over all of the notes because uh, I've done that many, many times. I'm just going to give you the highlights. This one opens with lavender and bergamot, so I don't really notice the citrus, but there, there is a little bit of brightness to it from the bergamot, but uh, the lavender is what I get uh, more so than anything on the top of this, and honestly, the lavender stays throughout. So if you like a lavender fragrance or if you like uh, essential oils uh, more than fragrance, this one might actually do it for you. Now this one has uh, rose, uh, there's jasmine and iris in this. So there's a hint 
of kind of a powderiness, but it's just kind of, it doesn't smell powdery, like baby powder or powder in general, but there's just a softness that the iris brings to the fragrance. So this one's so super feminine. Uh, and then in the base, it's got like benzoin and tonka bean and vanilla. So that vanilla is like, um, I know lots of people talk about the Guerlain vanilla, that it's just a really beautiful vanilla, and it is. It's not cloyingly sweet. Um, the one thing that I would say about this one is because of the lavender and there's also licorice, I think in the base, you get that little slight, slight hint of herbal or medicinal throughout the fragrance. I like it, uh, but definitely uh, that's, that might be off-putting for some people. This one I find is one that men really tend to love because it's sweet. Uh, it, even though like lavender is typically like in a guy's scent or oftentimes is in a guy's scent. This one is just, it's beautiful. It smells classy. It smells, it smells kind. Like I, I, it smells romantic. To me, this is a romantic fragrance. So when I think of this scent, I think of uh, someone and she's wearing kind of a I, like, I, I tend to be almost romantic anyway, but I tend to imagine like a woman and she's wearing kind of a beautiful uh, day dress. So it's not anything evening. She's got maybe an apron on and she's barefoot and she's walking through, la well, she wouldn't be barefoot because otherwise she'd be hurting her feet, but she's walking through lavender fields and she's got a beautiful basket and she's picking lavender. And she, it's just the air is sweet and beautiful and the aroma of the lavender so it's super comforting. Uh, that's what I get from this one. I just think it's beautiful. When I think of being a mom, this is the fragrance that I think of. So I love this one. And you know, it's a huge bestseller. So, okay, where to go next? So the next one I'm going to pick, like, and I've tried to pick one from each house. So I've got uh, there's one house that has two, but other than that, I kind of stuck with one from each house. Uh, but the next one is Alien by Mugler. Um, I just, this will forever be a favorite. It just smells so delicious. This scent is sexy, it's sensual. It's got jasmine, amber, and woody notes, I think. Uh, there's a bit of a soapiness to it. Um, this is one, I know a lot of people think that it's too strong or they want to wear it for an evening fragrance, but I think this is good anytime. I, ooh, like I'm smelling it on me right now and it just smells it's sexy, it's sensual, but with that little bit of cleanness, uh, I think it's from the jasmine. The jasmine's a bit clean. Uh, so I just think it's gorgeous. It's long lasting and it's been around for a while and it is definitely one of my favorites. So Alien by Mugler. So the next fragrance that I have for you is Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. Now, um, in a top 10 designer, how could you not choose a Chanel? First of all, the bottles are stunning. They're always classy. Like I, I just, I love Chanel. And I've tried quite a few Chanel fragrances. This is the only one in my collection right now, but this is definitely, this was my first choice. So in the opening of this, you get orange bergamot and uh, I think you get orange blossom as well, but what I get out of it is it's just kind of a warm sunny citrus. It's not it's not sharp. It's not super like lemony. It's definitely more orange. So just that warm sweet citrus and then it has rose jasmine. I think there's ylang ylang in this one as well. Maybe mimosa too. So it's just kind of a nice floral mix and of course then you have your oak boss bottom with some vanilla and vetiver, different stuff like that. So this one, this is one of the things I love about Coco Mademoiselle is it's one of those fragrances that kind of transforms as you wear it. And I love fragrances like that. So this one, you kind of get that warm citrus when in the opening, but then as, as it goes along, you get a little bit more of that floral. And then in the late dry down is kind of a spiciness from that vetiver and oak moss. Uh, and then, you know, that warm vanilla. So I find that this one kind of slowly uh, uh, morphs as the day goes on. And this one is super long lasting. So to me, if you're wanting a designer fragrance that's classy, uh, that lasts a long time and uh, kind of like morphs and you get different experiences throughout the day, this is definitely the one. And 
like it's just it's super classy but it's also although it's classy it's definitely something that I would wear every day so it's definitely an everyday perfume it's not so uber sexy that you feel uncomfortable you could wear this to the office uh, you can wear it doing errands you could wear it in a jean and a t-shirt you could wear it in an office suit uh, yeah whatever this one is just really great for every day but um, I would say that this is the epitome of class, definitely, so love it. So the next perfume on my top 10 designer fragrance list would be Dolce & Gabbana's The Only One Intense. Now um, this one, it smells to me, I did a video on this, I'll leave it linked down below of uh, this one versus The Only One. This one in the opening, it has neroli apple and a mandarin orange. Uh, and then in the mid it has, I think, jasmine, coconut, and something else. What I get out of this is just kind of a boozy coconut fragrance in the opening. So it smells just so sweet and delicious, coconutty, a little boozy in the opening. Love it. And then as it dries down, it gets more woody. So it's got cedar, cashmere, uh, and vanilla in the base. So. To me, this smells like really quite woody, like you get a lot of that cedar. It kind of reminds me of when I was growing up, I had this little tiny uh, cedar chest from Jasper, Alberta, and that's kind of in the uh, mountain parks. But um, I opened it, you'd open it up like it was all kind of shellacked, but you open it up and you could smell the raw cedar in that. And this one kind of reminds me of that. So you get that coconut, uh, some of the florals, a little bit of that kind of booziness to me anyway in the opening, but then as it dries down you get kind of that woody base. I definitely prefer the opening on this one, but overall I just think that this is a stunning perfume. Um, and yeah, I think it's gorgeous. I think this one also transcends the seasons. So I think this is a beautiful option for spring and summer evening. Uh, but then in the winter and the fall, you could definitely wear this during the day uh, and it would be like super cozy and warm. So even though it's got coconut, it's definitely not something I would reserve for just the summer. And so for that reason, I just think it's a great all around perfume and part of my top 10. Okay, being we're talking about warm scents, I have to talk about Tom Ford, Ford's Noir Pour Femme. Uh, this one, it's so freaking sexy. Like I smell this and instantly I'm like, <laughs> God, just, holy moly, holy moly, this one's good. So this one just smells so extremely sexy to me. Like I don't know why every time I talk about sexy, I have to do this with my face. Like it's like I can't help myself. I, I go into this face, but it's true. I just, ooh, it just smells so amazing. This one's considered a gourmand. It smells creamy and lactonic. It smells rich. Like this smells luxuriously rich. This one, what I think about when I smell this fragrance is uh, velvet and leather. <laughs> so, when I smell this, it transports me to um, it, it being in the winter time and let's say I have a velvet dress on and maybe I've got some sort of fur thing wrapped around me. Yeah, it could be fake fur, whatever, but it's some sort of, like it's a lot of really warm, sensual uh, materials around me. And the guy I'm with, obviously it'd be my husband. <laughs> anyway, uh, we get into, uh, uh, like, we're riding in the back, so you get into the back of a, a limo or whatever, a fancy car. He's wearing a tuxedo. Uh, you get in and you kind of snuggle up close to each other. So you've got the warmth of these materials and uh, the smell of just getting into the vehicle and you can smell your perfumes and I don't know. This just gives me a whole vibe. I find it really warm and cozy in a way, uh, but so sensual and sexy. It smells rich. It smells luxurious. Like this is super luxe. So I love it. I think a lot of people would actually like this one. Honestly, I think a guy would smell good in this too. Like, oof, 
I think a guy would smell amazing in this fragrance. So I think it could be unisex, but it definitely leans more feminine, I would say. Uh, it's gourmand, but it's just sensual, sexy. Ugh, goodness, love, love this fragrance. The next one is Entredi by Givenchy. Um, I love this fragrance. So this one, oh, it just smells so juicy and cheery and happy. Uh, this one has, it, but it also smells sophisticated, warm, and sensual. So juicy, cheery, happy, sophisticated, warm, and sensual is what you get in L'Entredi. Now this one is the Eau de Parfum. Um, I've smelt the uh, EDT version and I've smelt the intense version. I would say this is my favorite, but I love the other two as well. Uh, but this was definitely the one that I wanted to go for first. Um, this one has pear and tuberose. Uh, I think there's vanilla in this one as well, but I mainly get that pear and that tuberose. This is long lasting. It, it uh, wears really nice. It's pretty linear. You know, what you smell on the cap is kind of what you smell throughout the whole entire experience of the fragrance, but it just smells to me rich, uh, but it's also like juicy and just, oof, this is, this is a good one. I really enjoy wearing this one and I enjoy the scent bubble. I enjoy everything about this one. This one doesn't give me like, like a story time. Uh, this one is just really beautiful. Um, it's deep, it's rich, it smells expensive too. So some of these, like, you know, this one I wouldn't say smells really luxe and rich, uh, whereas this smells luxe and rich, I would say this smells luxe and rich as well. Now, definitely you need to be a tuberose fan because this one has got uh, like a heavy tuberose note in it. Uh, but I just think it's beautiful. This one, I'm not sure I would be able to wear it in the dead heat, like when it's really, really hot out. But other than that, any time of the year, this one is something that I'm going to rock. Um, but yeah, if it's super hot out, I think this one would choke me out. Uh, but I think it's gorgeous. And this is one that I think you can wear during the day, but I also think that it's sexy enough uh, that you could definitely wear it in the evening too. And it's just, oof, uh, ugh. Love it. Love that one. Actually, the reality is, is I just plain love perfume. It brings me joy. Does it not bring you guys joy? Like the bottles. The bottles are gorgeous. Like you just, like they're all different. They're all unique. They all smell different, kind of like us. Like, you know, they're just, they're just so pretty. So I love the beauty of the bottles. And then I so appreciate the artistry of the fragrance itself and also how they make us feel. Like, I don't know about you, but I just love the way fragrance makes me feel. So moving on. So I've got two that kind of tied, uh, like these are all top 10, I'm not putting them in an order, uh, but I have two, so I kind of have 11. Um, I have Elisab Le Parfum and I have Prada, Prada La Femme. And um, I can't decide which one fits into this category and which one gets booted out. I would say that out of these two, this would be the one that I uh, go for probably more so than this one. But I would say that overall, the Elie Sab Le Parfum line in general should be in a top 10. So like the whole line is beautiful. So Le Parfum, Le Parfum in white, and Le Parfum Royal. Um, like the royal one, I didn't choose that one because it's, you know, orange and rose and I wanted something that was like orange blossom floral, but I just think that this one is absolutely beautiful. So this is primarily an orange blossom fragrance and I just think it's super classy, very feminine, definitely something that you can wear, uh, you know, from season to season, although I do think of spring and summer primarily when I think of this fragrance. Uh, it's beautifully classy, and uh, although it's just primarily orange blossom, it also has honey and cedar. So as you wear this, it kind of warms up on your skin and you get a hint of sweetness from the honey and then that cedar, I think it's cedar, cedar or vetiver, something like that, a little bit of a spice, comes from the wood. Uh, so it just grounds this and stops it from being too heady. 
That said, I know a lot of women have commented to me that they found this to be just terrible. Like they hated it uh, because it gave them a headache and it was so uh, floral. So uh, this one is definitely not for everybody, but if you are a floral girl, something like Le Parfum or something like Prada La Femme. Now this one is also like very floral, so a ton of tuberose in this one. I believe there's orange blossom or elang there's definitely a lang a lang in this one. So this one smells a lot more sunshiny than this one. Uh, but if you're into florals, to me, these two are both really quite stunning. This one has spices in it, and it's got, I believe, beeswax and magnolia, maybe? So this one is just like warm, sunshiny, but quite floral at the same time. Classy, gorgeous, rich lady. These are both kind of like very classy, rich lady vibes. Uh, so I definitely recommend them. Like I said, they're kind of a tie. I couldn't really choose between them, but I wanted to have a floral type option for those of you that really enjoy florals. These are gorgeous, especially white florals. These are gorgeous. I have two more for you that I'm excited to share. And the first is Jean-Paul Gaultier La Belle. Now this one is so gorgeous. I heard, um, I can't remember who was saying, but someone put up that Fragrantica has changed their notes from a pair of vetiver and vanilla and has added a bunch of notes in there. So there's leather and a few other options. I just think this is gorgeous. It smells like juicy, sweet, uh, caramelized pear. In fact, my mouth is watering just thinking of it. This one, the color of the bottle, everything about it, it's so feminine, it's flirty, uh, it's sexy, um, definitely very, very uh, juicy, fruity fragrance. I just think it's gorgeous and I think most people would really love this one. It's so popular. Um, yeah, I, I just think it's gorgeous. I just... It's definitely one that guys gravitate towards too because it's so juicy and sweet. So yeah, this one is stunning. And yeah, top 10, top 10 for sure. The last fragrance, and it's the only one where I had a double in the house, and that is Tom Ford's Eau de Soleil Blanc. Now this one, um, I was really debating if I should choose this as a top 10, but honestly, once I had smelt this one, it became, um, I put it on my arm just a couple seconds ago. Um, I, I found that once I smelt this one, this was the summer fragrance to beat. Like there's nothing else to me that compares to this as far as beautiful summer fragrance. But the longevity isn't great. So I find that my skin eats it up quite quickly, but it is so pretty. So um, I get this, I get kind of a pininess to it, but there's a warm kind of uh, sensual, like there's a little bit of coconut. I don't notice the coconut. What I notice is kind of a little bit of a piney fragrance with just warm luxness that smells kind of sunscreeny-ish. So when I think of this fragrance, I think yacht. I think luxurious vacation. I think, uh, like I just imagine, being on my own private island. So, you know, it's a little bit wild. There's a little bit of uh, like pine trees or some sort of uh, coniferous situation around there. So you can smell the pine, you smell it on the wind. If you go up into the hills, but you're down at the beach and, and you come out of your like uh, luxury, luxury hut, because <laughs> this scent doesn't rough it. So you come out of your luxury hut. Uh, it's it's right on the Maldives. I've seen pictures. I wished I'd been there myself. But you come out of your luxury hut and you've got your own like kind of infinity pool. And then after the infinity pool, you could just dive right into the ocean and go snorkeling or do whatever you want. That's the kind of vibe that this gives me. So it's super luxurious. It's definitely beach. Uh, you know, there's sunshine, suntanny. Uh, like a bit of a sunscreeny vibe to this for sure. I think from the the pine uh, in it somehow. I don't know. There's coconut. There's all sorts of notes in this, but this just gives me luxurious, rich, uh, rich vacation vibes somewhere in the Maldives. Yeah, on your huge yacht. 
something like that. You know, this one, I think wintertime luxury in your fancy furs, getting into the back of a limo, snuggling all up and eesh, awesomeness. And then this one is Maldives, whatever. And for whatever reason, like, I don't know what it is about Tom Ford. Like, maybe this is terrible, but there's something like really sensually sexy about Tom Ford fragrances, I think, like Lost Cherry, oof, I just love it. So there's quite a few from Tom Ford that, you know, you smell it, it always smells luxurious and rich. So anyway, I'll get off my Tom Ford train. I know some people don't really like them and think they're overrated, but I just think that they're gorgeous and they smell like great ingredients. <laughs> Okay, that's it. So which ones out of these would be in your top 10 uh, designer fragrances? Um, I know, uh, you know, whoever it was that had left uh, the comment wanting my top 10 designers, I gave her a list off the cuff. Uh, and I don't know if all of these made it. But um, when I went home and looked at them, these are the ones that, that I felt like, okay, out of all the ones that I own, these would be my top 10 designer fragrances. Tell me which ones you like, which ones do you hate? Uh, do you have other ones that would be on this list? Ones that you go, what? You put that on the list? I would have put this on the list. I'd love to know what your list was, uh, because also that's a way I can explore other fragrances. So, uh, that's it. Um, other than that, I wanted to say thank you so much to everybody that uh, gave me ideas on different content, different video ideas fragrance wise. I got some ideas for makeup, skincare, that sort of thing. But I'm also wondering, would you guys be interested in any like designing type, um, you know, videos? Like for instance, um, all my furniture. So if I, let's see. So all my furniture in here was like old and I refinish it or, you know, just like I designed that uh, bench out or like the this console thing over here. I designed that out of barn wood. So um, would you guys ever want any sort of designer tips? Is that something that you're interested in? I'm just curious because like I've thought about doing vlogs or, you know, just all sorts of things. Like basically I just... I just, uh, yeah, I love talking about fragrance, but I feel like I end up talking about the same ones all the time. So maybe that's okay with you guys. Like, basically, like, I just like talking. So I'm kind of open to whatever, but I also, you know, I, I wouldn't mind, like, potentially talking about other things. Although maybe that would be boring. <laughs> okay, I'll just stop talking now. That, that for sure. I'm done. I'm going to just quit. <laughs> So, um, I hope you guys have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.